by Steven C. Jones, and it's before the curtain goes up, and the curtain's going up imminently, imminently at the Fire Hall Art Center, but we're okay because we're not talking to the actors or the director who are all friends because <laughs> they got to get the show up. We're talking to the writer, and her job's done. So hello, Sally. Hi. I just seem to have turned black and white in my screen here, but that's oh, you okay. Become, you become a ghost. I have. <laughs> How very mysterious of you, because your show is called Our Ghosts. Ah, uh, well, oh, there you go. You came back. That's what we <laughs> ghosts do. Yeah. It's, it's um, like Beetlejuice. You have to say the name of the play, and then you return. <laughs> our ghosts. Our ghosts. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah. thank you very much for having me here. And no I, I, I'm not sure how I feel about that. The playwright's work is done because the playwright's also the producer and she's being working her butt off. So, oh, but right. Uh, yes. Yeah. That's a good point. Yes, because the this show is uh, seems to be being produced uh, by Western Gold is helping support you. But it's also you as the Argos Collective. And I assume the Fire Hall is helping out a little bit as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. The Fire Hall is our presenter and they are, you know, definitely helping out in a big way. It's it's a it's a wonderful, you know, partnership, really. We started out to be a um, a co-pro, but it just didn't work. So it became two of us producing um, Argos Collective sort of in the, is, is the big, well, we're the yeah, it's mainly us and, and Western Gold. But Western Gold has come along to support and do some really cool things for us. And um, of course, Fire Hall is making us very much at home there and helping to make sure that things are going along. Because yeah, you're rehearsing there as well. So that's yes, great. yes, we are. Part of the battle is where do we rehearse these actors? Yeah. Now, our ghost is based on a true story. Uh, your father was a pilot, uh, Gerald Stubbs, and he he disappeared. Uh, no, but it was it, it, it's not Bermuda Triangle. It's not like bloop, he's gone. Um, can you explain well, a little bit about what happened? It kind of was like that, actually. Oh, cool. um, yeah, it's um, the the play really focuses on it. You know, it focuses on the disappearance. It's in, it's inspired by the disappearance of my father and his co-pilot James E. Miller. They're both uh, flying officers. Uh, jet jet. Um, jet, jet pilots. Why was that so difficult to say? Um, <laughs> they were, and um, they were out on a, um, a, a routine instrument uh, a flying um, a flight, which was left from the Comox base on the island, and uh, was meant to be gone maybe an hour. And uh, there was a wind and whatnot, but it wasn't, I mean, those are incredible, th those, those planes were incredibly agile and could um, deal with virtually anything. And they were very, well, my father uh, flew in the, in the war too, right? So they knew what they were doing. Right. They just, um, they went, um, they just suddenly disappeared from the radar. radar. And um, that was that. They were never seen again. And um, the... Um, I, I don't want to babble too much because I can do that and, and I do it too much. So when you want to just shut me up. <laughs> no, I'm good. I'm listening. Oh, they, they disappeared and um, um, the, um, the RCAF um, looked uh, towards Quad Quadra Island for them um, because there had been a, the sound of an explosion there, which they think actually came from one of the mines or, um, or the uh, one of the... Um, one of the businesses that was running there, one of the industries. Um, and in fact, it turns out that a, there a young woman who um, is actually someone I got to know because I taught her um, a daughter who, so I, I got to know her when she was in, uh, as a senior. Um, uh, at that time was in the area around the, um, they lived in the area around the, um, the uh, Whistler, uh, in the Whistler area. And um, it was post, uh, post Cold War. Okay. And people in that area had been um, trained in how to respond if you saw a, a plane go over. And she did, she saw a flash on uh, March 26, 19, uh, March, March 22nd, 1956, which is the day my, my uh, father and his co-pilot disappeared. And she went to make the call. Um, 
and which was you go, on, you go <laughs> you go on and you go um aircraft flash and there was a it was of course a um uh, the uh, oh god the um what do you call it the 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 phones when you, you know, people on different uh, lines party line party line there you go um, so they, they, they uh, a couple that appeared to be having a conversation at that point basically said get off the line we're talking here so this kid so, kept trying so so did so did she, uh, she eventually got through eventually about two yeah. hours later and wow. um but I nobody know. paid any attention they were still looking over in the quadra area and eventually that's uh, that the in the callahan valley up, up by whistler is where um first the canopy of the plane with the one that would go off oh. when they ejected um and um and then uh um the fuselage so uh, they, found wreckage. they did and it, that was all basically um ind individuals hikers um, people working for businesses who are flying over some of these discoveries and the Whistler search and rescue folks. So it was a combination of uh, officials who were going, oh, okay, I think he's over here now. So they were searching the area, but then other people, because I guess the, if the plane went far and wide, then other people were finding debris as well, going, hey, I found a thing. Well, apparently most of it was in one a place, but it th that was found. Um, and um, they're still they're still looking in the Whistler search and, and um, rescue uh, folks because um, they in after a helmet was found up there a number of things were found that made it essentially let me just backtrack a bit the RCAF looked where they looked and um, and then came in when they heard about the uh, the findings that were made decades after they disappeared. Um, and looked again and found nothing. Meanwhile, um, hikers came in and found the canopy. Um, the, the people flying over found the fuselage, it identified it from below. And then um, somebody found a couple of people who worked in the lodge up there came across one of the, the helmets and um, in not in good shape, obviously. But at that point, they knew that they had come down there, or at least their helmet did, somebody's right. helmet. And um, they, uh, the RCMP up there uh, um, opened it as a cold case. Um, and um, th that's when Whistler Search and Rescue got involved and, um, and, and began the, uh, the process. So, so, they, so the pilot and the co-pilot, your father and the co-pilot were actually never found, just one single helmet. One single helmet, and there were uh, there's some other things that I, I won't say anything about. I mean, this is because it will take away the mystery. This is a mystery story, um, okay. and it's also a story about a family and the impact on a family. <laughs>
Hey, do you think it might be a little easier if you change the names? <laughs> could you, could you go elsewhere? And I thought, yeah. And um, it really did help. And, um, but I think, I think what also helped um, as I, as I grew, as I, I grew more comfortable with doing it, because it really was difficult initially. Um, it was very yeah. difficult. Um, I began to look for the universal elements of it. And because they really are, every family deals with grief. But more than that, uh, um, there are a lot of mysterious disappearances, people in planes, and you never, you never know, you never find out where the plane went down. Uh, see people that walk out the door and never come back. And it leaves a big hole for those people. And um, and there, for my mother, it became uh, it became her life's work. Um, she was not ever going to let it go. First, it was looking for him, and then when it became obvious that he wasn't around, my dad, it was about um, it was about finding the truth because a lot of promises were made to her at the beginning when we were um the family was and the other family um were put off the base and you know a whole bunch of things happened and right. and, and and i think just it's just the way it was you so know you do this, you do this, uh, a big part of writing this was to also honor your mother and help give her 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 closure yeah yeah um but i think in a way well she she but I, I hope that, that I can help to, that I can help to, to solve it. I mean, it's amazing the people that have come through just from- Because um, you've got a lot of collaborators on this project. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Now tell me about this cast. You have an amazing cast. You do, yeah. Um, I don't know what to say. We have an amazing cast. We have um, um, Barbara Pollard playing Moira, who was, uh, um, a, inspired by my mother but certainly these aren't these characters are and are not my family and yeah. uh, same the other characters are real people but not real people yeah um so um barbara is uh and and um we have um lucy mcnulty um playing young moira uh and the two of them are just they're stunning and um we have um um, Sebastian Archibald, Corina Ackerman, and, and, uh, and, uh, and, yeah, and Rogi Yu. And Rogi Yu, who's also yeah. uh, co-directing or, or yeah. assistant directing, uh, associate director. Associate director, yeah. Yeah, uh, with Sarah. Sarah Rogers, the always yeah. busy Sarah Rogers. Um, so she's always jumping from one theater to the next. So that's probably why she has to now have associate directors following her around. <laughs> It's like, how did you do this? I gotta go. <laughs> yeah, so she's she's doing an amazing job, and I mean, they both are. It's it's incredible, and um, I have a bad cold, which I'm just sort of beginning to get over with now. So I actually have not been able to be in tech, which is driving me crazy. Um, yeah. But I've seen I'm getting these pictures, and oh, it looks so beautiful. I'm really excited. So nice. Uh, well, it sounds like a very heartfelt story. Um, uh, it's a drama, but I, I assume that there's mystery and laughter uh, really? also within it. Yeah, right. you put Sebastian Archibald into a play, you get you get you get some laughter. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's, a, he's a very funny man. He uh, so he's, he's standing in for your father. Is that correct? Uh, he is playing Vic and Stevie, who is my brother. Um, and um, uh, yeah. Nice. Um, well, Sally, uh, this is your chance to, because uh, uh, we I do these interviews so that people might be, we can use them as a marketing tool, so we might be able to convince some people to go see the show. Uh, so you're go I'm going to give you a little, a few seconds. You're a writer, you're not a marketing person or a publicist, but you're going to look right at the camera and you're going to tell the camera, uh, you're going to tell the audience why they should not miss our goats. So you're going to do your like uh, 10 second commercial plug for the show okay are you ready and oh uh, here i'm going to pin you uh so get ready to tell them now 
Argos is filled with love. It's filled with grief. It deals with uh, a universal kind of a, a story. It looks at the impact on a family and the uh, impact and the behaviors of the people that come in contact with that family. It's uh, there are it's a mystery. Uh, it's funny. It's sad. It's beautiful. And um, it tells a bigger story than the story of my family. It's more than that. It's about who we are as human beings and how we find our way. And in the words of my mother, promises do not expire with the passage of time, which is something that she um, used a lot wow. as she was digging and scrambling for information about her true love. So. Well, thank you so much, Sally. I'm sold. I can't wait to see it. Uh, it was such a great, uh, I hope your cold gets better soon. Yeah, me too. I have a much deeper voice though, so that's good. There you go. I'm yeah. not up here. <laughs> nice. Well, uh, Argos is playing at the Fire Hall Art Center and it's a poignant story about a true experience based on a true experience. And I look forward to seeing it. Thank you so much, Sally. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye.